In this video, I'm going to break down the best settings in NVIDIA and in-game for Battlefield 6 PC players. All right, so to start off, right click your desktop and we're going to hit up this NVIDIA control panel right here. If you don't see this, just type it in the search bar. And of course, you do need an NVIDIA GPU. If you guys have any questions throughout this video, drop them down in the comments or better yet, stop by live stream. Come hang out. I'm going to be playing this game a lot. So to start off, adjust image settings with preview. What you're going to want to do is do use my personal preference. Go ahead and slide that bad boy to perform and then go back to the middle button here because when you're in this middle button you're then able to go to manage 3d settings arguably the most important settings are in here okay so I have a 3070 with a i7 10700 so it's a good mid-tier PC that's a little bit outdated now but it's still very good and this is how I have mine set up okay so it's basically all meant for performance so I'm just gonna slide through these and you guys can copy them Okay, pretty self-explanatory. We'll go back up. Now, whenever you change something in one of these tabs here, just hit apply at the bottom before going over. Now in here, you definitely just wanna make sure you have your graphics card selected. So now we're gonna go down to display, change resolution. Make sure your gaming monitor, the monitor you use to play video games on is selected. Make sure you have the correct resolution selected for your monitor and then the correct refresh rate, okay? Definitely make sure you have the correct refresh rate. And then down here, use NVIDIA color settings. This is very nice. Adjust desktop color settings, so this is things like your brightness, your contrast, and your gamma. Tweak these a little bit. By default, I think it's 50, 50, and 1.0. One thing I would change in here, if you guys don't want to mess around with this at all, is digital vibrance. So this will make the colors in-game pop a lot. By default, it's going to be at 50. You guys are probably going to be tempted to want to bump this thing up to like 80 or 90. That will look insane, okay? The maximum I'd recommend is 65. Anything over that, it really starts to look fantasy-like and almost too much color. And then the other thing to take note of is this digital vibrance. If you watch stuff on your monitor, like YouTube or streams or movies, if you do photo or design work or video editing, colors are going to appear way brighter than normal because this digital vibrance is a global universal PC setting. So once you're done gaming, if you work on your computer also, you're gonna wanna remember to drop this back down to 50. And overall, that's basically what you wanna do. The main meat and potatoes here in the control panel is going to be the managed 3D settings. This is the main juice right here for your NVIDIA control panel, all right? So now that we have this stuff locked in, let's hop back into game and lock in our in-game settings. Here we are in Battlefield 6. There are a lot of settings in this game, so if you have any questions, drop them down below or stop by a live stream and I will be happy to answer any questions you guys have. I stream right here on YouTube. So we're just gonna run through these. I won't be able to explain everything because that's going to be like an hour long video. I'm just gonna run through it and then the main stuff Stuff like graphics and aim settings I'll explain and one other tip I have for you guys is if you see this square right here that means I have changed and customized the setting and again we're just gonna scroll through this stuff I would talk about everything, but um, again, it's just gonna take too long. One thing right here, master volume, I usually have this at 60 or 65. Brightness, I turn up a little bit because I don't want my shadows too dark to where enemies can hide in them. Some people like immersion like that, but I just don't. I like my player color on white. It's just super crispy. It reads easy in the kill feed and white looks very clean. Friendlies, I like blue. Squad color, I like green or uh, cyan, I think is another great option. And then enemies, I like red. Another great option for enemies is going to be yellow, but me personally, my brain, I like red and it's most intuitive for me. These two options, accent and primary, are going to be your main HUD elements. So like your primary weapon, your secondary, your utility, the mini map. So if you wanna customize that look, that's going to be under primary and accent. And then neutral, I do recommend leaving this on either a gray, not a pure white, I would do like a gray gray or you could even throw in some color i think the default is like a off blue kind of blue steel that's a very good ui color something like this camera effects so this is basically motion and things like that i turn everything off relating to motion except i do like the infantry hud motion this is like your mini map um whatever is going to be in the top left and then like your little ui element with your primary and utility it kind of reacts to your in-game movements and i think it adds a nice um effect so i leave the infantry infantry HUD on, but everything else I basically turn off and I do turn on reduce. 
sprint camera bobbin. So that is turned on. Moving forward to controls. So as you can see, hold toggle, basically a behavior logic of if you want to press or hold buttons. So again, if you see the little square next to it, that means I have changed it. Otherwise it is default. And this is really just personal preference, what makes sense to your brain. Moving forward, a controller. I don't play controller, so I don't know. Menu tutorials and in-game tutorials off. Uh, these are little like hints, so, um, you know, action prompts. Like for example, right here, it says, enable or disable action prompts visible under the crosshair, such as the reload action. I really enjoy that where it pops up and it's like, press this to reload. That lets you know you probably have only 10, five rounds left in your mag. So I do like this indicator and a few other ones. And that's it for accessibility. So let's go over to gameplay. Hold toggle. We actually just went through that menu already. It's just appears again on the gameplay tab. Capture area outline. I like this on. This shows you on the mini map and I believe in game on the ground where the objective or point that you need to capture is to let you know if you're in or out of bounds. I'm going to do a more in depth video on aim for sure, how to recoil, uh, how to master recoil and aiming mechanics, but we will go over my sensitivity for launch week. Okay. Oh, this maybe fine-tuned a little bit but more or less it's pretty accurate here are my other keybinds here's some other things I uh, didn't change any vehicle stuff yet. I'll probably turn that down a lot because tank gunner sensitivity is usually super high. Here's mouse and keyboard. This is a big section of the video. So I play 800 DPI on an 8K Hertz mouse. Um, so, you know, you're really going to want to find what works best for you. So just keep that in mind. Control settings. If you play 1440p 27 inch monitor, you should set this to 178. And I think the other value is 138 for a 24 inch 10 ADP. Basically, this value is supposed to correlate to the size of your monitor, and it's kind of like a mathematical fractal scaling type of equation. So um, 27 inch is supposed to be 178. Again, I like 14 uh, cents in game with 800 DPI. Uh, field of view 110. I may bump that up to 120 or 115, but I'm just like starting on 110. And then here are some of my behinds here. Again, I like my slide on C, the same as crouch. Uh, what else do 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 this is all pretty default and then going back to aim again for lower zoom optics so basically iron sights red dots hollows I like running a slight reduction so if this was at a hundred like this that means that my 1x optics or iron sights will be a true 14 sensitivity but if I put it at 0.98 that means you could multiply this by this value and then you're gonna have so this would be like I don't know 13 point something right so it's just a way to kind of remove some slight jitters from your aim and I like to do this in a lot of games with extreme tracking like Call of Duty Apex things like that I think it just helps kind of smooth down your aim and make micro adjust adjustments a little easier everything else I have adjusted yet because I haven't tried these optics and then of course uniform soldier aiming I do like that on so that's the aim settings again I'm gonna do a full video on that going way more in depth so here's a big one guys the graphics so this is going to be very dependent on your system obviously single PC setup and I record and stream from the same PC so uh, basically what we're gonna be doing is everything on low okay I just straight up <laughs> that's how I run most games everything on low or off that's what I would recommend to start off really when any shooter comes out regardless if you have a 4090 or whatever I always just tank my settings as low as possible and see how the performance is in your graphics quality settings that's what I would recommend doing regardless if you have a 4090 or a 2060 none matter I would just put everything low and off test it out see how it feels see how much frames you're getting how it looks if you're getting stutters things like that that's where I'd start um, I change these brightness. I like my sharpness kind of crisp at 80, so I bumped that up. And then in advanced resolution scale, I just keep that at 100. Uh, I do have a frame rate limiter because my monitor is 165 hertz, so I just cap it a bit below the limit of my monitor just to avoid any hiccups there. Definitely run enabled plus boost. I always uh, run this in games. It feels good. A lot of people don't like DLSS. I I don't really care. Um, in some games, it does make it look incredibly fuzzy and. Kind 
kind of harder to spot enemies. Uh, in the beta, it was fine for me. I'm gonna try it out again. I like DLSS and performance and make sure you pick this based off of your graphics card. Don't just pick what sounds best. That will also help DLSS perform better. AMD FSR frame gen. This is actually really good for the AMD cards, but I don't have one, so I just have it off. Future frames, I don't have a 40 series. Um, I think this is 40 only, right? Maybe it's not, but I just have it off. And then performance overlay, I would just keep that on simple or off. Again, field of view 110, may bump this up to 115 or 120. Third person, bump that up a little bit. Here's more motion blur, camera shake stuff, off, off, off. Um, chromatic aberration, vignette, and film grain all off. Uh, I run full screen right here, full screen resolution. So as you can see right here, 2560 by 1440, that's my native res. I like going down one because you can't really notice the quality change, but you will get a big uh, performance increase. So I just like dropping down one from my native res and that feels pretty good. Uh, aspect ratio, you can keep that on auto. V-Sync off. Toggle between realistic soldier lighting that does tend to blend to the environment and contoured lighting. So it basically says that soldier will blend into the lighting of the environment. And to me, that sounds like it's an added layer of camouflage for enemies, but I just have it off for now because this setting to me sounds like it's going to make it harder to spot enemies. Uh, maybe I'm misinterpreting that, but I just have it off. Advanced HUD settings, horizontal HUD padding. So as you can see right here, this gray space, this is your screen. These are all the HUD elements, the little squares. I like my HUD padding pretty high because if you stretch it to the edge of your screen, you're going to be looking right here to read the mini map. You have to move your eyes more. So this is like a super sweaty, um, you know, setting I've done. And I learned this way back in like Modern Warfare 2, COD 4, maybe even uh, someone taught me this. So I just have always since then liked to run a bit of horizontal padding. I'll probably do somewhere between 60 to 75. Kill feed, I like squad and nearby. Oh, Okay, you see two enemies with shotguns in the kill feed, you know two enemies have a shotgun nearby you. So like it's just giving you free player IQ. Minimap size, definitely I like large. The background opacity, 90. I do have view rotation on. In respawn shooters, I like view rotation on. Uh, 160 distance and pretty much um, default for all of this stuff. As you can see, pretty straightforward. Icons and indicators. This is another big one. So icon intensity, uh, probably leave this at like 60 or 70, maybe, um, HUD icons. So aim based icon opacity. I left this all on default and I just chose to go down here to the specifics. So for objectives, basically I left the scale at hundred. This is going to be like flags and stuff. I left the scale at hundred and the opacity at hundred. When I'm zoomed though, turn this off. If you don't set this to zero when zoomed, when you aim down sight, there's going to be way too much clutter. So 100%, I think this is almost like an essential setting to do. Um, turn it off and then uh, occluded. Again, I have that turned down to 60 as well, 60%. I may even do like 50. For friendly icons, uh, I definitely leave the scale at 100 and then the opacity at 100 because friendly icons are just as important as enemy icons. You don't want to be shooting your friendlies. You don't want to be confused. You want to instantly be able to tell that's a friendly, that's an enemy. So I leave the friendly icons at 100 scale, 100 opacity. When zoomed, I turn it down to 60 because you set it at zero when you're ADS again it's going to be hard to tell who's friendly or enemy so um, I do turn the opacity down a bit when zoomed and then for revives uh, the scale again I turn the scale down a bit when a uh, friendly needs a res and then the opacity again at 60 and then when zoomed I put the opacity at 20 so that kind of logic follows suit again for squad icons as well so uh, pretty much the same here for that enemy icons so I bump the scale up actually to 130 really be like that's an enemy my brain can really easily distinguish that and i keep it at 100 for uh zoom as well so we leave that there neutral icons um this is going to be flags and objectives things like that so i'll probably actually turn neutral icons down to like 40 percent when zoomed uh ping marker scale i turned down the ping size a little bit to 80 the opacity is at 50 because pings are really important you want to know where the ping is but you don't want it to block the enemy and honestly when zoomed i 
may even turn this down to like, I'll probably leave it at like 10, I'm gonna be honest. So audio uh, master volume again is at zero, but if I was playing, I would have it at 60 or 65. Sound effects at 100, because this is going to be like footsteps, gunshots, important things. Music, I turned down quite a bit. Soldier voice lines, I put at 70, because sometimes they're a little bit too loud, but sometimes the vo soldier voice lines actually give away a lot of good information. So you still wanna be able to hear what they're saying, but sound system, I like stereo, and then war tapes. Uh, music radios, you could just turn off that if you want, but I kind of wanted to leave them on to see what music they play. Command console enabled. Um, we went through the mini map settings already right there. Scoreboard ping. I like this on for sure because then you can see the ping of players. Hope this video helps. Again, if you have any questions, drop them down below or stop by a live stream. I'm going to be playing a lot of this game. So thanks for watching and have a good one.